This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Old dogs, and welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show, where we have special episodes not featuring guests, where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. Today's topic is Who Do You Know? But before we get started, as always, I just want to check in with you guys. Make sure you're doing okay. Make sure that you are kicking it, crushing it, bopping it, whatever, in the real estate investing world. And if you're not, hey, don't be discouraged. You always can. And hopefully with today's topic, it will be one that will be helpful to you. But as we get started here, I would like to give us first the tip of the week. Okay, simple one. Okay, you have a rental property, whether it's a single family home or whether it's an apartment. Don't get those. Okay, we're talking, we're going into the bathroom. Okay, and in the bathroom, there are the tubs that have the sliding doors. Okay, glass doors. Total dangerous thing, total thing that can just cause all kinds of problems and heartaches. You buy a property, it's got one of those, get rid of it. Take the door out, you know, scrape it down, <laughs> you know, re reglaze the tub, whatever you got to do, and put up shower curtains. Believe me, it is just, it's a standard now, unless you're doing like real high end properties, um, they're really is no need to have those sliding doors, uh, shower curtains, uh, shower, uh, even the rods you put across, you know, the kind of ones that you kind of screw into place. Well, they kind of, you know, they kind of twist them, you know, and they kind of expand. Um, I usually try to like to put at least a mounted one that I think it's a little bit more solid, but you know, just get that, you get a shower curtain, they're cheap. You can throw them away. You don't even have to wash them. I mean, they're inexpensive. Uh, they can still look nice and decorative and, and make the bathroom, you know, just, just pop, you know, with a nice color combo or whatever, but you know, they don't, have to cost that much. You can do a simple shower curtain. I always have the sort of the backing, you know, not, not only the curtain, but the liner too, because you can always just throw out the liner or clean the liner if you want to. And, uh, um, and you can still keep the outside. Uh, and some of the outside ones are, you know, can get pr pretty nice, you know, they're almost like cloth. Uh, but either way, that's the tip for the week here is uh, shower curtains instead of sliding doors with your tub. Okay, let's get into our topic. Who do you know? I really consider it a, a true privilege that, and an honor that I'm able to interview some of the, the most fascinating and amazing guests on my podcast. I, I, I really am. I, I just uh, consider it a real honor. And, you know, w one of the things I, I'd like is, I, you know, I get to find out, <laughs> ask the questions that I would want to ask, right? And that's kind of just my whole approach in, in doing that is a, is trying to learn. This is my education. I started later in life. So, um, you know, I want to, I want to get educated and I'm going to go right to the experts, the guys that are doing it, that are successful. And, and there's one question that I always ask my guests and it's kind of at the end of my little lightning round, what I call the, uh, the wrap it up session. It says, if something devastating happened and you lost absolutely everything you had, and all you had was $1,000 in cash, what would you do with that $1,000 to help you rebuild your real estate investing business? I get all kinds of interesting answers from all types of investors. You know, I've got flippers and wholesalers and, and multifamily and syndicators and, you know, you name it, all kinds of self-storage, trailer parks, whatever you call it. And, and so there's, there's 
a, a lot of different folks coming from a lot of different angles. Um, but there, it's really interesting is sometimes the most experienced and successful guests, I mean, some people get real creative, you know, with what they're going to do with the thousand and they divide it up and I'd use this much for that and this much for that or whatever. It seems like the most experienced and most successful guests always kind of give me the same answer, which is really interesting. And they usually come back and say to me, I wouldn't really need the thousand dollars. And I go, what? I mean, you've lost everything. How are you going to rebuild that? And they would say, why? And they, you know, they say, well, you know, yeah, I mean, maybe I could use a little bit of it. Maybe, maybe I'd get a phone if I didn't have a phone. I don't know how barren I am. I don't know if I'm naked. I need to get some clothes on, <laughs> whatever. But, um, you know, a, a phone, a laptop, um, maybe pay for an Uber. Uh, but generally, if I used it for anything, it would be for money for coffee or lunch with a person. Okay. And the real investment they say though, isn't really the money that you'd be investing, but it's the time. Okay. Because really the only thing that really would matter if you're really serious about rebuilding your, your business is you know, having the right amount of time with the right person. And that's really where their focus goes is meeting with the right person can make all the difference in the world to you getting back on your feet or rebuilding your business or building your business from scratch. There are kind of two categories of people that fall into that. There's a person you know or have known for a period of time, and then there's a person you don't know. First off, maybe looking at the people you know. Now, and I'm, and I'm using this as a reference, you know, you, you guys you know, probably aren't looking at, well, if I lost my whole business and so forth, but, but this also has to go for people that are building businesses, okay, too, and trying to build their real estate portfolio. So if you've been in business for a while and for example, and you've been fairly successful, chances are you've met a number of people who have worked with you or helped you in the past. And my guests said that they would generally get prepared for a meeting with one of those people. It could be somebody, for example, uh, that you may have worked with at one point or another. Um, and, and the idea though, in that meeting is to basically provide an opportunity for that person to invest the collateral for a venture. And it could be to purchase a property. It could be to sort of fund the restart or the restart up of your business. Or, um, you know, it could be something else to produce a good return for that person who would basically become an investor in what you, whatever it is you're presenting. Now, the guests that I've asked this question just knew that, you know, when you know the right people, they can help you to get to that next step because they have been there and they've done that and they've recognized that real estate is really more about people than anything else. And when you know the right people, they can help you to get you where you go, where you want to go. You always need someone in that real estate equation, whether it's a banker or a lawyer, an investor, a buyer, a seller, or even a potential tenant. People are a critical component to your success in real estate. So why would this person want to help you? Let's say you do, you set up a, a you know, a coffee meeting at Starbucks well, generally they would want to, because first off they should, this is the person that already knows you. They know you and hopefully they trust you. They know that you can do what you say you can do. And they may know, you know, just basically from your track record that you will not only return their initial investment, but there will be a nice upside as well. And uh, maybe it's interest or maybe it's a part ownership in a project or a property. Those are some of the reasons why that person might be a, a good person to contact because they do already have a relationship with you. But what if you don't have that person? There are those people that say it doesn't really matter if I know them or not. You know, if it's somebody that I don't know, okay, it could be a, a real estate invest. You could have been, let's say, a real estate investor for a considerable period of time. You are used to doing certain things, including presenting ideas or investment opportunities or projects and so forth. It's what we do. That's a regular part of what we do as real estate investors. So why would, when, you know, these guests that I've asked this question to, why would they want to meet with somebody they don't know? Well, to get to their place of success, they usually had to pitch 
and they're used to pitching people ideas or properties or investment uh, opportunities and so forth. Um, you already know, you know, from experience again, who the right person is. I mean, who would you ask to come to a meeting like that? Well, it needs to be somebody that needs something or is interested in having something. All right. Uh, it, you, you haven't had a problem presenting a pitch. And generally, you invite people that you think would need what it is you're presenting to them, whether it's a return on their investment, whether it's uh, an opportunity for them to grow their portfolio by partnering with you or whatever. You know the pitch and you know the buttons to push because you've been there and you've done that. You also know the needs of the people you're pitching. All you need is the right opportunity to get in front of them and for them to listen. So the key here is always people. Now, there are the, the responses from very successful real estate investors who've realized that their success depended not so much on themselves, but on others. And that working with the right people, no, having the right contacts, the right connections has been the, the key to their success. So this is my question to you. Do you know the people you would need to approach to rebuild your business or to just succeed. If you lost everything, would you have that person in mind that you would meet with at Starbucks saying uh, that there would be like an 80% chance that this person was going to help you? Or at least if you talk to you know a handful of the people, one of them is going to, going to help you to get where you need to go. If your answer isn't an emphatic yes, then why not? This doesn't just pertain to desperate situations where your survival depends on it. This is an integral part of just regular real estate investing. For success in real estate, people say it's location, location, location. And that's very true. But it's also people, 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 or relationships, relationships, relationships. If you have taken the time to create a strategic real estate plan, which I encourage everybody listening to this show to do, how much of that plan is devoted to developing critical relationships? How much of your plan is devoted to creating the kinds of relationships that if you needed to call somebody to, to get involved in a project or to help you out, um, would they be able to join you? in helping you in this project or to rebuild your business or whatever the need might be. Now, the relationships can be varied and they come from a lot of different types of people. For example, potential lenders, having a good banker that knows you and knows your reputation, knows that you uh, know how to purchase you know, uh, properties that produce income, uh, mortgage brokers, you know, People that uh, know the loans and, and what, no, what loans would, would meet your needs. Uh, private money lenders, hard money lenders, even family offices. I mean, these are all groups that you want to have relationships with that, that kind of control the purse strings of whatever project you might be pursuing or whatever your objective may be in growing your business. Um, and then there's other investors. You know, it's important that we know other people that do the same thing that we do. There isn't really so much a competitive nature in, in our business as it is um, a, I think, a real there's a real interest in, in being cooperative, you know, and partnering with people or co-sponsoring with people. Um, they can also lend to you um, and, uh, or they could, you know, buy something from you. And so there's, there's that, that synergy that uh, uh, investors should know other investors and have good relationships with them. Um, and then there's also sort of your deal sources, people that can refer business to you or be an important part of your deals, like attorneys or accountants, um, of course, realtors, agents and brokers, wholesalers, list brokers, um, even county clerks or government uh, employees and people that uh, would know about potential deals, inspectors, uh, appraisers. You know, these, these are people that know people are getting ready to sell a product and maybe you could get in there ahead of time. Flippers. Uh, marketers, um, even social media experts can be a deal source or someone that can bring you to deals. I think the key here, and, and this is and this is an important part of it, because a lot of people will say to me, um, it's really about understanding people and what their needs are first. 
that if you can understand what a person's need is, you can help to meet their need. At the same time, they can help to meet yours. It's just not knowing the right people. Uh, Even more, it's about understanding the needs of these people. Solving a need or a want with that individual is key. And that's that's just sort of the basic function of sales, if you really look at it. A few guests have put it uh, this way when asked how they would rebuild their business. You know, if they only had that $1,000, like I mentioned. And uh, there's been a few that have just said said it this way. And I thought it was very, um, uh, very astute of them. Is I would find someone with a need or a problem to solve. And I would come up with a solution that they would gladly pay me for to help to rectify. Okay. So it's finding that person with the, has that need and being able to approach them. So that could be a person, for example, maybe that has a tax lien on their house or they've gone through a divorce and, and they, they may lose their home and, uh, they need to do something because this, this is a, you know, this is a big issue for them. And maybe a per- person with a retirement nest egg that is counting on that nest egg to fund them through their retirement years. And they need at least a 10% re- return in order to be able to live off of this nest egg. It could be a fellow investor who is looking for a certain type of property that you can help them find. And the list goes on and on and the various needs that people may have that you might be able to fulfill from your experience. You see, knowing the right people is important, but it's not just knowing the right people. Even more, it's about understanding their needs and knowing how to use your expertise and giftings to solve their problem or need. It's certainly food for thought. Well, that's it for today. Please note, old dog listeners, everything presented here today, including links, can be accessed in our show notes on the Old Dogs website at olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash blog. And you're going to look for the episode entitled, Who Do You Know? So until next time, remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Thanks again for listening and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.